first, you say? First? I guess you're first, Eric. I guess. I guess you can be first. Hey, bro, Conky. Hey, Jan, and hello, Damon. And there's Matt. All right. The man of the hour. The man of the hour. Who knows if it'll take us an hour, but the man of the hour. All right, so... Um, for those of you who don't understand or don't know, I am Mr. Rivers. Welcome. Uh, I am a pack-cracking channel. Um, have been for a number of years now. Um, I do it for the love. I do it for the love of cracking packs. I love cracking packs. Um, and I try to like give back a lot of what I crack to my community here on YouTube and, you know, Patreon and what have you. So, um, Matt has graciously given me the uh, ability to open a box of Double Masters by essentially sending me the money for a box of Double Masters uh, and allowing me to open it up for him and then ship him the cards. So, thank you very much, Matt. I really appreciate it. Um, so, anyway, let's get right into it. Um, as to what time it is, Jan, it is approximately 7.15 p.m. here in Canada on Friday. 1 a.m. for you. It's time for sleep, it sounds like. Sounds like sleep. So let me get rid of this screen right here, like this. Hello, you can see me. See, I got I got the Jace Boy. I got the Jace Boy out because I figured it was appropriate for this set. I don't have a playmat that has some of the other cards that are from the set. I actually don't even really know everything that's in the set. So it's going to be a surprise for me, just as much as it's a surprise for you. So Matt, because you paid, you get to pick which box, left or right. It's a whole booster box, Eric. We're doing a whole booster box. Because, in my opinion, the booster boxes are much better value than the VIP Masters boxes. But that's just my opinion. And... And by that I'm talking, like, not necessarily from a dollar value EV standpoint, but just from the amount of product you get for the price you pay. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, he picks right. He picks right. So, I mean, like, I've seen... I've seen some people open up boxes, like VIP boosters, and make back their money. Like, basically break even and or get a little bit back right um and that's fine that's good but when you're paying like a hundred bucks us for for a vip booster and you get back your money like it's that's a lot of investment and then you have to be able to sell those cards for that value to make your money back right like that like if you can't sell them for face value right which let's be honest a lot of players can't sell their cards for face value they have to undercut tcg prices or they have to buy list the cards on tcg or sell them to a store or trade them in and you get less than the actual face value so you're not really making your money back waiting on a box yourself it's in the mail but your buddy that gets them for us con contracted covid holy moly well, we're rooting for him, bro, Conky. Hopefully he's okay. Because, I mean, like, we had a... The first... The first... Um... The first person in my hometown to die of COVID was only 40. So... It does. Huh. How about that? Little tiny arm... For Jace here, and then like his shoulder here with like the other arm, and then like this here matching up with this cloak pretty well. That's interesting. I never even noticed that, Eric. <laughs> this purchase is on the cusp of what you think is acceptable for a product. It's way too expensive with your job to get more than two. Yeah. So like, put it this way: if if I hadn't had some like you know emergency expenditures in in July with my teeth um, and then also adopting two cats I would have bought more of this myself as you saw I had two boxes one box is Matt's one box is mine that's it for me 
I'm not planning to get any more double masters unless I sell more of my cards. Speaking of selling cards, not to shill or anything, but I am selling cards right now. A bunch of foils. This is what's currently left in the pile. These are all foil. I currently have a post on Twitter where I'm selling them. And they're up for sale. Prices aren't listed. Prices are DM only. So if you ask me in chat what the price is, I'm not going to tell you. So if you want uh, prices, just DM me on Twitter or send me a message on Discord or whatever, right? Um, and uh, we can work it out. I've already sold a bunch of stuff. Um, I sold a Mystical Tutor to Matt. And I sold uh, Linvala... Uh, Michiko and Tarmogoyf uh, as well to somebody else. Foil. All foil. So, anyway. Hey, Amanda Burn, How's it going? Happy Friday night or Saturday morning depending on where you are. It's Saturday morning for Jan, right? Alright, Jonathan. Sorry that you have to be working while we're doing this, but Matt afforded me the opportunity to buy this, so... Today you finally got promo boosters from Friday Night Magic and got a foil absorb. And a Massacre Worm. And non-foil Garrick. Nice. And then you opened one booster of Masters and got Blightsteel Colossus. That is pretty sweet. Why? Oh, it does. I see. I see. I have done this a foolish way because they have packed this... Uh, Unlike other boxes of this, where it has an outside box that the inner box with the cardboard is in and you slide it out, this is actually the full box and this is just tucked in. So, interesting thing to note there is they're now saving money on these boxes by not putting that extra outside wrap to protect the cardboard, essentially, or protect the interior when they get shrink-wrapped. So... They're saving money on all that cardboard and the printing, right? Because they print art all over it. So, like, for instance, like, uh, Battle Bond, uh, Modern Horizons, uh, Ultimate Masters, right? All of those boxes that came in the square box, Masters 25, Iconic, Ma or, well, Iconic was in the triangle box. So, Masters 25, Ultimate Masters, Battle Bond, uh, Conspiracy, Conspiracy Take the Crown, uh, all the ones that are in the square boxes... No, it absolutely wasn't necessary, Mana Burn. I agree with you. It absolutely wasn't necessary to have that extra piece of cardboard, so they were just wasting money. So, totally fine, right? And it's totally fine with me that they don't do it anymore. I don't really care. It makes no sense. It didn't make any sense for them to have it in the first place, to be honest. But, um, I gotta, like, fix my camera here, because, like, see, like, this is straight to me. Like, it is perpendicular with the edge of my table and my chest. But on camera, look at how much of an angle it's on. So I've got to, like, this way? we got to go this way? There, how's that? That's a little better, right? You can see my playmat is signed by the artist. There it is. You opened your first mystery booster and got a Birds of Paradise? Nice! Sweet. That's sweet. Hey, Ghost Unit. All right. Hey, there's your box topper, and it's not ruined, so that's good news. Do you want box topper first or last, Matt? Because this is your box, so you tell me. How do you want to do it? Do you want the suspense to be at the end, or do you want to know up front? Now, the other question I ask you is, do you want all of the commons, uncommons nonsense? Um, or do you want only, like, the rares and mythics, and then, like, you know, all the uncommons, and then commons of note? Or, like... Is there something that you... Do, like, because I don't care about shipping you the whole thing. I'll ship you everything. But, like, if you don't want it all shipped, that's fine, too. You just have to let me know. All right? Like, if you don't care about the the commons and stuff, by all means, let me know. All right. I gotta wait for Matt. Last, of course. And everything of note. Okay. 
So you don't care about the trash commons then is what you're saying. Now I have no idea what the order of these packs are because it's my first this is the first pack of double masters I have ever opened. I have no idea what the order of these packs is. I know that there's two rares, right? That's about all I know. Not commons or uncommons that are trash. Okay, so you just want all rares, all foils, all mythics, and then all uncommons and commons of note. Correct? Just so that I think that's what you're saying, and I think that make that makes sense. Okay, Orcish Vandal. So then, if you if I see a common that you want, right? Yeah, if you see a common that you want, just tell me then, right? Because I'm not gonna. I don't know. There might be some that I'm like, oh, that that's for sure a thing, right? Like go uh, like Golem Skin Gauntlets. I have no idea. Is this good? This seems like it would be good for an equipment deck. One mana equipment for two attach. It gets plus one plus zero oh for each equipment attached. In your like white weenie deck with all the equipment on it, that seems pretty decent. But I mean, I don't, I don't know, right? Steel sabotage, iron league steed. Oh, crib swap. This is one you're gonna want. That this is a this is a stable commander card, right? This is a staple commander card, so I'm assuming you probably want this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sweet. Crib swap. Disciple of the Vault. This this uncommon was worth a whole bunch of money, right, when it was first printed? Because it was super broken, right? Whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may have target opponent lose a life. There's an ultimate there's a there's an infinite combo with this and like the spell bombs, right? I believe it was. There's like a way to like return them and then like sack them and then that bounces a thing that then lets you play it for free. Which then brings the spell bomb back, and then crib swap works with first sliver. By the way, yes, it does. Good old first sliver. Ooh, well, first pack has got a lightning greaves. It's pretty good. That's an uncommon worth a couple dollars. I don't know if this disciple of the vault is worth money, so I'm just gonna put it down there. But lightning greaves for sure. Ooh, Yavamaya's embrace is a cool little card. This is, like, super expensive. Super expensive for what it does. But it gives it... it you, you control Enchanted Creature, and it gets plus two, plus two, and trample, which is pretty sweet. All right, so first rare. Mesmeric Orb. Whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that permanent's controller mills a card. My goodness. That's interesting. And... Doomed Necromancer. I guess we put, like, our uncommons and commons here, and then we'll put the rares where we normally do. Doomed Necromancer. Let's pay one, tap it, sacrifice Doomed Necromancer, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Sweet. And then foil. Foil Ancestral Blade. Is there two foils in these packs? There is two foils in these packs. My goodness. The value. And then you got an Eldrazi Scion. Or Eldrazi... Oh, it's an Eldrazi Spawn. There you go. Do you want the tokens, too, or are you good without tokens? I mean, if there's a token of, like, note, like an emblem or something that you want, just let me know, and I'll, pu I'll pull it out for you. But other than that, I think all the all the tokens you should be getting in your other box, most likely. So just let me know. Uh, Blood Briar. Only the tokens that are hard to get. I have no idea which tokens are hard to get. That's the problem. So, like, if there's a token that you specifically see and you want, just tell me, and I'll, I'll put it in. Do you know what I mean? Copy tokens are a buck. Okay. Bone Picker. Skin Brand Goblin. Ancient Stirrings. Oh, it's not over a dollar anymore, but I'll put it in the pile. Corridor Monitor. It's always good for Commander, right? So, Accomplished Automaton. Iron Bully. Strength of Arms. Bloodshot Trainee. Gelatin Gelatinous Genesis. Create XXX Green Ooze Creature Tokens. My goodness. Woodland Champion. And for a rare here. Ooh, a Mystic Gate. Who doesn't like a little filter land, right? Filter lands are great. And a champion of Lambo Lamholt. Good old champion of Lamholt. What are what's the like percentages of pulling foil rares out of these packs? Because of um the reason I ask is because you're getting two foils in each pack, right? So what's the what are the options here? Ravenous Intruder and Topple the Statue. Hey, Maholnik, and hey, Epic Dude. 
I think I got everybody. If I missed you and didn't say hi to you, I apologize. And this hi is for you. Take that. You've seen about one to two per box on average? Okay. Battle Rattle Shaman. Fierce Empath. Whoop. Executioner's Capsule. Cathodian. Hey, Bruce. Brainstorm. It's another decent... Ooh, Expedition Map in the common slot? Yes, please. Yes, please. Iron Bully. Crusader of o Odric. Buried Ruin. Sacrifice Buried Ruin to turn target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Is this good? Is this is this a uh, is this an uncommon worth money? I feel like it might be. Oriac Salvagers. Hoping for that upside down misprint uh, for 1.0000 minus to be opened for Matt. I don't know what you're talking about. There's a weird misprint. I'll have to go look this up later, I guess. Weird misprint. Okay. Oriok Salvagers. Return target artifact with converted mana cost one or less from your graveyard to your hand. Dismantle. Is the Salvagers worth money? I don't know. I have no idea. Dismantle. Destroy target artifact. If that artifact had counters on it, put that many 1-1 one -one counters on... Or charge counters on an artifact you control. Ooh, another filter land. Twilight Mire. Noise. Noise. And an Endless Atlas. Draw a card. Activate this ability only if you... Hey! Hey! So, hey, Matt. Guess what you just got? It's an Endless Atlas. But you know what? Let me just put this here. I don't know if you can even see this on the camera. Check that out! That baby's crimped! That baby's got a nice crimp on the bottom of it. Look at that. Almost all the way across. There it is. So crimped cards fetch, uh, fetch more money. That's all I'm telling you. That's all, that's all I'm telling you. Crimped cards fetch more money. Uh, because the misprint community is huge. So... That's like a misprint. And so there you go. Molnick called it. Showed up to the chat. Was like, hey, let's hope he gets a misprint. And then boom. And it's a commander card as well. Yeah. But. 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 We're, we're you know, we're sidetracked here. Right? Because, like, you've still got two foils left. And guess what your foil is? The first foil in this pack. It's an uncommon, and it's worth money, and it's foil, so it's worth more money. Has it been foil before? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't think it's ever been foil before. I think this is the first foil printing of this card. I think this is the first foil printing of this card. No. <clears throat> oh no, there was one foil printing of this card before? Yeah, because that's online only, online only, online only. There was one foil printing of this card before? No, no, that's only in online. Yeah, this is the first foil printing of this card in paper. I will give you a hint. It's not Oubliette. That's a Basalt Monolith. First foil printing of Basalt Monolith. What's that coming in at? Because that's got to be pretty nice, right? In foil? What's it coming in at? Nine bucks? Alright. Can't complain about that. Hoo -hoo -hoo! Hello, foil sneak attack. Well then, 
How about a foil basalt monolith into a foil mythic? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So you got, not only did you get a crimped rare, now the, the basalt monolith would be worth way more if it was also crimped. It is unfortunately not crimped. And I mean like, maybe you maybe you don't want it crimped, but you know what I'm saying. It is miscut though, I will say that. This is definitely miscut. Like look at look at that top border, right? Look at how thin that top border is. And then look at how much space there is on the bottom. Right? And in fact, if I flip this over, you can you can tell from the back for sure, right? Like look how thin this is compared to how wide this is. Right? See how thin and how wide? And then not only that, but in this corner, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. You can see the white dot in the corner there. See it? So. Not crimped. Not crimped. But, you know. You got a crimped card, and you got a foil basalt monolith, and a foil mythic. And it's a good mythic. Sneak attack is a good mythic. So, that was a pretty good pack, I have to say. Executioner's Capsule, Cathartic Reunion, Bloodbriar, Gleaming Barrier. It was a money pack. If you had bought just that one pack, you would be happy, for sure, paying the price for these. These are really dark. Look how dark this is. Man, the quality control. Who was that, Bruce? Bruce that said that? That quality control is pretty bad. Strength of Arms. Master Splicer is the first uncommon. Ooh, Path to Exile. That's a nice uncommon. We'll take that. It's a good one. More Crut Banshee. And rare here. Another another filter land. Three filter lands in a row. Interesting. Mystic Gate, followed by Twilight Mire, followed by Graven Cairns. And you got an Ion Storm. Alright. Then you get a foil cathartic reunion. And a foil defiant salvager. With a germ token. I should do this though, right? I should do this. Let's let's keep the foils that are, you know, of note. Let's push these over, because we can make some more space here. We should keep the foils of note in their own little pile, right? That seems like the right plan. Like I can put them like here, right? These are the foils of note. Under the foil pile. Yeah, that seems like a right, right spot for them, right? Still on camera. Everybody can see them. And you don't need to see all the other foils, right? Dark Steel Axe. Teamer Battle Rage. Great little card. Twisted Abomination. Uh, Bull Shock Gauntlets. Magnifying Glass. Relic Runner. Surge Node. Is Surge Node worth money still? This used to be worth money. I don't know if this still is. I will put it into your common pile anyway. Sanctum Spirit. Because it is a great little card. Surge Node is fun. We've got an Invigorate. A Throne of Geth. Throne of Geth is over a dollar, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. Clone Shell. Ooh, a Thoughtseize. Alright, that's a nice rare. Sweet. That's the uh, that's the old Lorwyn art for Thoughtseize too, isn't it? And a merciless eviction. All right. Foil cloud reader sphinx, and Kozilex predator. Cool. Hey, the elemental token. All right. A chrome mox and a mana crypt would be all right too. I mean, yeah. Fair. Fair. Cathartic reunion. Bloodbriar, a lot of the same, like, common runs I've noticed here. Cast Down, Corridor Monitor, Accomplished Automaton, Chatter of the Squirrel, Metallic Rebuke, Glint Sleeve Artisan, and then you're into Uncommons. Pongify? Pongify? I don't know, I think. I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, Valorous Stance, this used to be, like, a $3 Uncommon. I don't know if it still is. Brimstone Volley. Another filter land. Look at this. Huh. Fetid Heath. And a Maze of Ith. Wow, that was a pretty good pack. Those two lands, very good. Strength of Arms in foil. And, ooh, foil chromatic star. 
That's a nice one, too. Oil Chromatic Star is very nice. Chromatic Star just a just a solid card. Right? Cuz you pay one tap it sack it make any color of mana but then when you put it into graveyard you also draw a card. Yeah, that's why I put it up in that pile. Punkify is worth money. That's why I put it in the pile there. Make sure it's going to Matt. Weapon Surge Sylvan Might. If I if you notice any commons that are worth money that I blow past, please tell me, because they belong to Matt. Parasitic Strix. How come I don't know this card? Where is this card from? When Parasitic Strix enters battlefield, if you control a black permanent, target player loses two life. Is this from, like, um, the original Shards blocks? Hey, MTG Hermit, how's it going? You missed it, man. We pulled a Crimped Endless Atlas... In the same pack as a Foil Basalt Monolith and a Foil Sneak Attack. And that Atlas came with a Twilight Mire as well. It was like this pack from like crazy nonsense. It was a crazy nonsense pack. Looks like a Shards card. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like It looks like it's from Shards of Alara or something like that. I don't know if it's money. I have no idea. Keep me honest, everybody. I really appreciate it. Flare Husk. Golem Skin Gauntlets. Ooh, another Crib Swap. Sweet. There you go. Treasure Keeper. Ravenous Intruder. Golem Artisan. Ooh, there you go. Kylia of the Vast. Uh, this is a nice mythic, and it's... This was only in foil until just recently, wasn't it? Is that correct? I want to say it was only in foil until just recently. Because where did they print this? It was like, it got printed in like... One of the the mystery was it the mystery boosters packs that it got printed in, right? Because it's in foil in Commander's Arsenal, foil in the anthology. Um, I think this is. I don't think it was non-foil. Oh, it was it was? No, that's a different one. That's Zenith Seeker. Yeah. One commander you didn't have. Noise. Yeah, um, yeah. So this is definitely a foil. It was this was only in foil, right? I don't think it got reprinted because this says commander. This says that it was this was non-foil in commander, but I don't think it was right. It was only in foil, wasn't it? Like this is telling me that it's in non-foil, but I don't think that that's the case. Anyway, whatever. It's still a great car. It's still a great mythic. And you've got a Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. Alright. Oh yeah. Sphinx of the Guild Pact. Good old 5-5 five, five for 7. And a Dismantle. Foil Dismantle. Nice. And a Wolf Token. We hope that there's lots more, to be honest. MTG Hermit, let's be honest. Okay, we've got... Conclave Naturalists. Salivating Gremlins. Heartless Pillage. A braid. There's a good common. All right. Gleaming barrier. Fairy uh, mechanist, I should say. Costly plunder. Thraben inspector. Fatal push. Nice. I didn't know that they reprinted that in here. Sweet. Is the glass dust halt Hulk? Uh, this is another shards card. Is this is this worth money? I don't think it is. All right. I'm going to go sleep in 12 hours. I will be drafting Masters and have a lot of other things to do before that. All right. Have yourself a wonderful night, and good luck with your drafts tomorrow, Jan. I hope you do well. Ooh! Oh, did they upshift this? Because this wasn't uncommon. Sword of the Meek's a great card. This wasn't uncommon. They've obviously upshifted it. And a Master Transmuter in the same pack? Nice. That was a solid pack. Master Transmuter and Sword of the Meek are both worth money. Foil Teamer Battle Rage. Ooh! Foil Urza's Mine! Yes! Yes, yes! Now, to note, these are not the first foil copies of these to ever be printed. There is foil uh, copies of this in, what is it, 8th edition? 7th edition? Somewhere in there? One of those, one of the core sets had these, and then they could be foil. And then instead of white border, they'd be black border. 
so. Very nice, though. Hey, there's that token, the copy token. Someone mentioned that the copy token was, was good, so we'll keep that off to the side here for you, Matt. This token can be used to represent a token that's a copy of a permanent. Cool. Cool. They they upshifted it in the uh, for the set because the combo piece is an uncommon as well. Fair. That's a fair thing to do, Damon, for sure. Yeah, I think it was eighth, Maholnik. I think it was eighth. Cast down, weapon surge, Sylvan Might. <laughs> Ar Argivian Restoration? I I guess that's how you pronounce that. I don't know. Balduvian Rage. Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot. Apprentice Wizard. What the heck? Pay a blue, tap it, add three mana? Interesting. That's weird. Oh yeah, the Butcher is back. Ancestral Blade. Is that is that Apprentice Wizard worth money? I don't I honestly have no idea. Culling Dias. That's a great little card. Culling Dias is a great little card. You can have that one for sure, Matt. S uh, Sarah Sphinx. A 4-4 Flying Vigilance in blue. Oganata. Or O Naganata, I should say. O Naganata. Ooh, Brea! Yes! Good old Brea. Man, there she is. Holy moly. That's another one, right? This is another one that there was no non-foil copy of, right? This hasn't been reprinted since Commander, right? It's a nice one. It's another nice mythic. Forget green, we comboing out. Oh! Double mythic pack! Blightsteel, Colossus, and Brea in the same pack? My god. Goodness. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. <laughs> Let's look, like see the foils be absolutely absurd in this too. Sickle Slicer and Gelatinous Genesis. Okay, well, it's, you know. That was a spicy pack. Woo, my goodness. My goodness. My goodness. Weapon Search. <laughs> Sylvan Might. Dark Steel Axe. We gotta just see if Matt robbed me of the of the right box, right? I mean I pay, I bought two boxes. They came out of the same case, right? So it was like a, it was a, one of the half cases that come in the case that I got, right? That was like an eighty dollar pack. Yeah. Flare husk. Hey, Urza's power plant. Alright. Sweet. Frogify. Remember the fallen? Springleaf Drum? That's a good one. It's not robbing you if you let me pick, B. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Don't worry, man. Hinder. Hinder's a good uncommon, too. Alright. Unlicensed Disintegration. Liege of the Tangle. Woo, baby! A Noble Hierarch. Nice. We'll take that. Noble Hierarch has come down a lot in price. I remember when Noble Hierarch was like a $60 to $70 card in non-foil. It's come down way in price, but it's still a great card. It's very, very good. Corridor Monitor in foil, and a Supernatural Stamina. Woo! Woo! Is Noble Hierarch $8 now? <laughs> if that's the case, all of you should be buying Noble Hierarchs for $8, because they're definitely well worth $8. Darksteel Axe, Teamer Battle Rage, Twisted Abomination... Corridor Monitor. Iker Wellspring. I don't think that... Uh, I don't think that Noble Hierarch will bounce back up to, like, what I remember it at, right? But, um... It it'll definitely go back up above 8. So if they're it's at $8 now, you should be buying them, because it will go above 8. Pyrite Spell Bomb. Is that the Spell Bomb that you want? No, that's the 2 damage one. That's not the one you want. Brainstorm. It's a good little common. Angel of the Dawn. Hidden. Oop, that's the wrong pile. That's the wrong pile. It'll be $15, 20 a year or two from now. Provided they don't reprint it again. Yeah. Hidden stockpile. Pented prism. Is this a thing? 
Is this a card? I don't think this is a card, is it? Remove a charge counter from it. Add a mana of any color. Is this a thing? I don't know if this is a thing. Whatever, we'll put it in the pile, because it's a it's probably playable in Commander. Ash Barrens, also playable in Commander. Blasphemous Act. Good old Blasphemous Act. And, ooh, Avenger of Zendikar. Four Mythics so far. That's pretty good. Avenger of Zendikar is a nice Mythic, too. I love Avenger of Zendikar. It's such a great little card. When it comes into play, it just makes a whole bunch of plants. Then whenever you play a land, all your things get bigger. Great. Fierce Empath. Ooh, Foil Vampire Hexmage. This card's great, too. This is a standout uncommon. Very, very good. Servo token. So we're at... We're at... Uh, this is, box has been pretty good so far, I would say. Supernatural Stamina. Ancient Stirrings again. Bone Picker. Accomplished Automaton. Turn 2 Merit Lange. <laughs> Noble at 14. Yeah, okay. That, that sounds better than $8. Uh, Flare Husk. Parasitic Strix. Oops, I'm putting these in the wrong pile. Oh, God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. You go in the common pile. Ancestral Blade. Ooh, Darksteel Citadel. Nice. Core Tapper. Put a charge counter on target artifact. Sacrifice Core Tapper. Put two charge counters. Okay. Keep putting... I have too many piles. Esper Zoa. All right, and then we've got a Magus of the Abyss. 4-3, and says at the beginning of each player's upkeep, destroy target non-artifact creature that player controls of their choice. It can't be regenerated. Seems pretty cool. Conjurer's Closet. That's a nice one, too. Ooh, Foil Crib Swap. There you go. That's sweet. There's a nice commander playable right there. Crib Swap. Do we want to put it down here? Sure. And a foil Seraph Sphinx. Oh, wow. That's a really cool-looking mirror token. Holy moly. This is new, right? All of the other tokens have been, like, things that have been printed before. Right? Like, this is all stuff that's been printed before. This is not. This is new. That's cool. Huh. It's blue as well? Like, it has blue around its name and stuff. So is it a blue mirror? Cool. If so, cool. That makes sense, Maholnook. It's cheaper for you guys over there. Is that for, uh, Bru Bruniclad? I guess so. Mmm. -hmm. It must be, right? Twisted Abomination. Conclave Naturalists. Salivating Gremlins. Everflowing Chalice, it's a good common. Mirror Retriever, also a good common. Videlkin Infuser. Peace Strider. Fortify. Also, Crib Swap is a popular legal card now, I think. Or, po oh, Popper Legal. Yeah, because it's common. Fair. That's fair, Damon. Treasure Mage, that's a good one. Mirror Smith. Rush of Knowledge. Rage Reflection. Creatures you control have Double Strike. And go and Godo! Bandit Warlord. Damn Godo. Uh -huh. We had a dude play against, so I played some Commander on MTGO with uh, Brett from Kitchen Table Commander and Austin from Commander 99, and we brought in a random dude. Just some, like, random player. Um, just joined us, right, to be the fourth. Um... And they play. They were playing. I don't remember what what their commander was, but they were playing. Uh, uh, what what was that? Um, the helm from Dominaria that copies legendaries and makes them makes tokens that are not legendary. What the heck is that? Helm of the Host. Is that what it's called? Helm of the Host. I think. Your, your box had a b bunch of miscut commons. Interesting. Yeah, Helm of the Host. So he's playing that with this. And it just, it's like, he was like, like he played it out and he got it. And it was like, oh, well, he just wins. And then he said in chat, he's like, I'm not going to do it because it's unfun. Because he's like, it's fun for me, but then it just kills you guys. And then the game's over. And you guys seem to be p having a pretty chill game. And we were like, yeah, we're having a pretty chill game. He's like, that's fine then. So I won't do it. And I was like, okay, whatever. 
I was like, if you killed us, we would just start a new game, I guess. Like, that's just basically how it would go. Gleaming Barrier Foil. And, ooh, Foil Rare here. Mirror Battlesphere. Looks gorgeous in foil, by the way. Like the red with all the little mirrors, the circles on them. Looks really nice. So, one Foil Mythic, one Foil Rare. Okay. 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 Conclave Naturalists, Salivating Gremlins, Heartless Pillage, a Braid again, nice. Cathodian, oh, another Urza's Power Plant. Where are the other, where are the other Urza's lands? We've had one, we've had two Urza's Power Plants and none of the others in the common slot. Steel Sabotage, Crusader of Ordric, ooh, Mishra's Bobble. There's a good uncommon, and a Manamorphose. My goodness. That's a that's a hot streak of un if you opened this pack in draft you'd be like uh Mistress Bobble Man of Forfos I don't know Pyre Wild Shaman Masterwork of Ingenuity and just battlefield as a copy of any equipment on the battlefield interesting interesting and a Swift Blade Vindicator with a foil Rapacious Dragon and a foil Darksteel Axe all right. Now, do you get to draft two cards from the first pick with this? Is that how this works? Or is it only if you draft the rare, you can draft both rares? I don't know how the drafting works for this. Does anyone know? How do you do the draft of this set? Lightning Axe. Good old Lightning Axe. Oops, that's not there. That goes there. What is this? It's like... Or pay the five, yeah. Blaze Fiend. First pick is two cards. So there, you could have picked the Manamorphos and the and the Mistress Bubble if you want for your first for your first pick. Two picks for your first pick. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Crushing Vines, Skin Brand Goblin, Corridor Monitor, Iker Wellspring, Pyrite Spell Bomb, Alabaster Mage, Thopter Engineer. Reclamation Sage, that's really cool. I'm gonna put this in because it's it's new art, and I like that. I like that. Cranial Plating, another solid uncommon. I don't know if you want it. It's not really worth any money, but let me know if you want that one, Matt. But uh, we've got a Thought Reflection here. If you would draw a card, draw two cards instead. Dear me. And a Blood Spore Thrinax. Holy moly, 2-2 two, two with Devour 1. And each other creature you control enters battlefield with an additional X 1 1 counters on it, where X is the number of 1 1 counters on Blood Spore Thynax. My goodness. My goodness. Foil Argivian Restoration, or whatever you want to call it, and a Foil Driver of the Dead with a Demon Token. So much pump in this set. Plating not worth much because Affinity is dead. Yeah, well, Plating's not worth much, I agree, but it's still a great card. Still a great card. Heartless Pillage. Another Abrade. That's good. Supernatural Stamina. Oops. Hey! Ancient Stirrings and an Urza's Mine. Alright, we got there. Urza's Mine. Sift. Sickle Slicer. Oops, I put it in the wrong pile. Strength of Arms. Is it Charm? Good old Is it Charm. Gelatinous Genesis. Selesnia Guild Mage. Thespian Stage. There it is. And a Rolling Earthquake. Earth Rolling Earthquake deals X damage to each creature without horsemanship. Without horsemanship? Is there any cards in this set that actually have horsemanship? I have a question about this. Am I am I missing something? A foil Bloodbriar and a foil Thopter Engineer. Okay, I'm back. Sleeping is hard. Well, listen. As long as you think you can get enough rest to, to get to your draft in time and stuff and, and be, you know, awake enough to draft, by all means, stay, stick around. But, you know, if you need to sleep, please try. But I understand. Sleep is hard. Twisted Abomination. Uh, Kozilek's Predator. K Kazool's Toll Collector. Are the rare lands legal in Pioneer? Uh, no, no. So the master sets are never part of, like, Pioneer. Pioneer is only, like, essentially, like, think of Pioneer like how modern works, right? So, 
it's quite similar, except that th because these master sets are printed from essentially only modern cards, all the cards are legal in modern, right? I don't even know. Like, uh, can you play uh, Kalia or Brea in modern? I don't think you can, right? And they're printed in this set. I don't think that that changes the legality of it, right? Do you see what I'm saying? So I don't think that you can play... None of these cards have ever been reprinted in Pioneer. Um, that's not necessarily true. Like, there's a lot of cards that are in this set that are in Pioneer already. So if they're a reprint of that, of cards that are already in Pioneer, of course they're legal, right? Um, but not, yeah, like, not all of them, right? That's for sure. Like, Thoughtseize is in Pioneer, right? Because it's it was printed in Theros, and Theros is in Pioneer, right? Iron Bully. Everflowing Chalice. Apprentice Wizard. Chatter of the Squirrel, Sanctum Spirit, Master Splicer, Throne of Geth, another nice little uncommon there. Ooh, and a Path to Exile, yes please. And your rare is a Meddling Mage. Non-line card spells with the chosen name can't be cast. My goodness. And another Mythic, there we go. Skithrix, the Blight Dragon. It's a great little Mythic. This Mythic is solid. It's not the mythics that are like the top end mythics from the set by any means, but it's still a great mythic. Foil, Videlkin Infuser, and a foil Iron League Steed with a Sapperling token. Divest, Rapacious Dragon, Silumgar Scavenger, Death Hood Cobra, Brainstorm, Cathodian. Urza's Power Plant again. You've got lots of Urza's Power Plants now. Angel of the Dawn. Painsmith. Riddlesmith. Lots of Smiths coming out of this pack. Cogwork Assembler. And, ooh, Exploration. That's a nice rare. We'll take that one. Ooh. And there you go. There's uh, Brudeclad. There's Brudeclad. You got the token to go with him now. So there he is. Very nice. Skittles is a 60 Canadian card. Yeah. Yes, he is. Booty clap. B -b 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 Booty clap. Um, have I opened any VIP boosters? No. And will I be? Probably not, because I'm not shelling out 150 bucks Canadian to get them. Uh, because I don't think that the dollar value in them... Like, put it this way. When I talked with the guy at the LGS, they didn't have any left anyway right? Which didn't matter to me, because I wasn't planning on buying any. But I asked him how the people who had been opening them had been doing, and he said, he said, the people that have opened theirs have either come in just under breaking even, broken even, come in just over breaking even, or come over, come way over breaking even. He's like, there's been nobody yet that has essentially gotten just completely hosed on their pack, dollar value-wise. Which is great. That's good. Except that I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, and that is you have to be able to sell the cards in the pack for their face value at the time of, like, you know, when you're like, I pull it out, and say you get a foil Cyclonic Rift alternate art, and it's worth, like, $46 right now or something like that. You have to sell it for $46. If you cannot sell it for $46, it's not worth $46. You can definitely search all the cards and repack them. Ew. Hermit, that's gross. I don't even want to think about that, but you are absolutely right. <laughs> you are absolutely right, and that's gross. There is no way to prove that those are still sealed by wizards. Ooh. I don't even want to go there. That's a terrible... Ugh. Ugh. It just... It gives me... Ugh. Ooh, look, an ape. A 3-3 ape token. I haven't seen that before. That's what I mean. Even the seal isn't a wizard seal. So, like... Mm, that's bad. Bone Picker. Lightning Axe. Glaze Fiend. Crushing Vines. Balduvian Rage. Argavian Restoration. Chromatic Stars. A nice little common. Crusader of Odric. Sandstone Oracle. What is this? I'm just about to choose an opponent. If that player has more cards in hand than you, draw a card. Oh, well, that's a commander card, isn't it? Dread Return. What's this? Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Flashback. Sack three creatures. Okay, cool. 
Also a commander card. Topple the statue. Salvage Titan. Nice little artifact there. And you got a Bosch. Iron Golem. Oh my gosh. It's Bosch. It's not oh Bosch. It's Bosch. They forgot to put the O in front of his name and make him red black. Fairy me Mechanist foil and a Volshock Gauntlets foil. Oh, a nice little Thopter token. Uh, you have missed some of the crazy pulls. Uh, the one pack we opened which was craziest was the pack that had a Crimped Endless Atlas, a Foil Sneak Attack, and a Foil Basalt Monolith in it. That was probably the, the craziest pack that we opened so far. Lightning Axe, Glaze Fiend. I would expect another Foil Rare here out of this box. Crushing Vines, uh, Skin Brand Goblin, Everflowing Chalice. Apprentice Wizard. Again, if I'm missing any commons that are of, you know, dollar value or note, please let me know, because I'm sending these cards to Matt, and I want him to get the ones he wants. Bosch the Hose Lord? Yeah. Never buy VIP packs from someone that's not an LGS, that's for sure. That is absolutely correct, Damon. Uh, and you still have to be careful with the LGSs as well, unfortunately. You have to make sure that it's an LGS that you know very well, and you know them, and you know that they won't scam you. Um, I would not walk into a random LGS and be like, hey, can you, do you have any VIP packs left? Can I buy them from you? I would not, I probably would not recommend. A Sphinx Summoner. Yeah, exactly, Bruce. Exactly. Sphinx Summoner. Hey, kid, want some VIP packs? Opens up coat. There's just like squished cardboard boxes that are is saran wrapped. Or buy four sealed in a case. Yeah. You'd have to essentially buy four so that it has the stop wizard's tape on it. And that's that's it. Right? So that you know it's not been tampered with. Sphinx Summoner. What does this do? 3-3 three, three flyer for five. It says when it's battlefield you may search your library for an artifact creature card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. That seems like a, that seems like a good commander card. We'll give you that. Sentinel of the Pearl Trident. Jorah's Familiar. Cascade Bluffs. Another filter land. Followed by Blade Splicer. Yeah, look at that. There there she is. The good old Blade Splicer. Costly Plunder and Riddlesmith Foils. You gotta get to work. Alright, there's only four packs left here. Uh, no name, senor. Have a good day at work. Try not to work too hard. Tumble Magnet. Is this a card that's worth money? I feel like it used to be. I don't know if it still is. Dire Fleet Hoarder. Goblin Gaveler. Steel Sabotage. Need another big mythic. Okay, Iron League Steed. Let's let's hope. Another expedition map. That's a good one. Frogify. Remember the Fallen. Veteran Explorer. Now that's a good uncommon. Trash for Treasure. Sack an artifact. Return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Ooh, there we go. We got an Oubliette. There it is. The first reprinting of Oubliette ever. And there it is. Now you have a copy of Oubliette. Oh, you'll be fine, Jan. You'll be fine. An Arabian Nights booster, an M2015 pack, and a VIP booster enter a bar. <laughs> Your commander is tapped and doesn't exist. Well then. Ooh, alright, well, listen. It might not be the top end mythic by any means, but it is a land tax, and land tax is a great card. I love this card. This card is so good in, like, any kind of white deck, because this card just, like, absolutely gives you value. Like, I play land tax in my angels deck, my kitchen table top uh, angels deck. Because angels cost so much friggin' mana. And you can just sandbag lands in your hand for a few turns. Like, say you have an angel in your hand worth eight. And you have four mana on the battlefield and two in hand. You could just, like, play land tax and, and just be like, I'm not gonna play a land this turn. And then you go get three more land. And now you have four land in your hand. You know, or, like, you have you have two land in hand, so you go, go get three more. Right? Put them in your hand. Now you have five land in your hand. Yeah, and it's deck thinning late game. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a great card. I just love land tags. It's such a good card. And an austere command. That's nice. Sighted in against ramp. Yeah, that too, epic dude, for sure. Foil Iker Wellspring. 
and a foil Yavamaya's Embrace. All right. Okay. Okay. So what's that put us to? Six Mythics out of this box? That's pretty good. That's a pretty good Mythic count for 24 boosters. Right? Skin Brand, Divest. Now, of course, you're getting... You're really getting, like, 48 rares worth of boosters, right? Is that what it, is that what it's, we're talking about? Uh, as far as I understand, Mana Burn, all the box toppers are essentially the alternate art. That's how you get them, or you get them from, like, the VIP packs. Rapacious Dragon, uh, Magnifying Glass, Apprentice Wizard, Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot, Eager Construct, Fortify, Culling Dias, Vampire Hexmage, Cogwork Assembler, and a Sunforger, alright, and a Mere Battlesphere, alright. With a foil skin brand goblin and a foil iron bully. With a beast token. This pack was upside down. Did you see that? This pack was like that. Do you see this? It was literally upside down. And it was off the bottom right hand row. So it was in the box like that. And I didn't change it. How did that happen? That's actually like something I haven't really ever seen happen. Having a pack loaded into the box upside down. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, we've got a Divest, Rapacious Dragon, Silumgar Scavenger, Death Hood Cobra, Sickle Slicer, Balduvian Rage, Sift. Uh, as far as I know, you cannot get the Borderless cards in the normal packs. Um, yeah, so... So yeah, I would, like, yawn exactly what I would say to you is if you wanted to start Budget Commander, start with Commander Quarters. He does a phenomenal job of telling you, like, here's where you can start with things that are on a budget. Like, if you're trying to stick to a small budget um, to build Commander decks just to have fun, phenomenal job. He's super good. He's super good with that stuff. Ooh, Thopter Foundry. That's a nice one. Uh, I used Thopter Foundry as part of a, a infinite combo with, uh, whatchamacallit, um... Time Sieve? Yeah, Time Sieve. Gore Clan Rampager. Skull Mulcher. What a weird name for a card. Open the Vaults. Return all artifacts and enchantment cards from all graveyards to the battlefield under their owner's control. That sounds like a sweet little card. The Karn on Drugs. Magus of the Will. 3-3 three, three for 3. Pay 3 tap. Exile Magus of the Will. Until end of turn, you may play lands and cast spells from your graveyard. If a card will be put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn, exile that card instead. Cool, cool. We got a foil sandstone oracle. And a foil... There's the foil rare. I knew we were going to get at least one more. There's the sunforger. Foil sunforger. Hey, and a merit lage token. Non-foil to mention. Let's move those cards up there so that I stop bumping them with my arm. All right, last pack, and then the box topper. And then the box topper. We've got orcish vandal. Fierce empath. Battle rattle shaman. Brainstorm. Cathodian. Urza's Power Plant again. So you got Urza's Power Plant four times, and you got Urza's Mine once. So you're missing Urza's Tower entirely. Like, it just doesn't exist to you, apparently. What a weird thing. Ancestral Blade. Painsmith. Another Lightning Greaves. That's good. Nice hit in the uncommon slot. Glass Dust Hulk. All right. We're looking for a mythic, right? We want a mythic. Okay, that's a wound reflection. That's not a mythic. The beginning of each end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. My goodness. There's totally a miscut card in here. <laughs> it's not a mana crypt. It is a mythic. And it is blue.
One JC boy. I picked the right playmat. I picked the right playmat. And Matt, apparently you picked the right box. Because holy... Pre-holy. Seven mythics in one box? Plus a foil mythic? You got eight mythics out of this box. And your mythics were not half bad either. Right? Like Brea, Kalia, Blightsteel, uh, Skrithix, Lantax, Jace. Alright, now, if you can see, can you see in this corner? See that? See how there's a card there that sticks out past the corner of where it's cut? You see that, right? Like, compared to, like, the here, right? All of these cards are, like, the same, right? Same cut. Not the same cut. Huh? What do you think? And it's... And it's... And it's not the token. It's, in fact, the next card. It's this guy right here. So you've got a square corner, Twisted Abomination. You've got a square corner, Twisted Abomination, and it's not quite square on this corner, but it's not cut properly either. You see it? Like, you can see how round these corners are, right? This corner here is also not round. So it's it's got one square corner and one almost square corner. There's another miscut for you, Matt. That's pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> hey! Hey! What's up? Did you want a foil Stoneforge Mystic? How about a foil Stoneforge Mystic? <laughs> this pack had a Jace in it and a foil Stoneforge Mystic. What is even, what is even life right now? What is even life right now? Oh, nice. Another mirror token to go with your little dudes. Jeebus. Jeebus. That's a rare. That's a mythic. Three foil rares, one foil mythic, seven non-foil mythics. And don't forget, we still have this. Matt doesn't want this, though, is what he told me, right? He just wants me to keep it, I think is what he said, because the box was so good. He was just like, it's fine, you can just keep the... I'm just kidding, Matt, of course we're gonna open it. It's, yeah, it's, it's interesting, uh, Epic Dude, it's, it, it's one of those things, like, the misprint community talks about it a lot, and, uh, normally if you open a pack in a box that had a crimped card or a miscut card, you end up getting a lot of cards out of that box, because it comes from essentially the similar print run, similar cutting and such, that you end up with a bunch in the same box, that are the same misprint to have one card be crimped and another card have square corners come from the same box is extremely unusual because that's two different types of misprints um so it's very interesting to see that happen in one box that tells me that the randomization of these boxes is superb because that's the problem that they've been having a lot lately is that the randomization of their product has not been very good you know, like, you get lots of double rares, you get, you know, like, that kind of stuff, right? Double foil with double rare mythic might have a weird... Yeah, it might have a weird sorting algorithm. You're absolutely right, Epic Dude. It might, it might also play into it. All right, Matt. Let's open up your box topper. Now, to, to mention, this box topper thing... Is there two? There's two toppers in here. I was wondering why it felt... So rigid. Take notes. Yeah, I have magic touch for everyone but myself. That's how this works. Alright. So I've already seen what one of them is. Because because the name was right at the top when I opened it. Okay? So that's the one that's on front. 
So well, let's look at the first one, because the first one we see, and it's this one. It's a meddling mage. It looks gorgeous, I have to say. Absolutely gorgeous. Right? And it's a great little card. Like, this card definitely sees play. So, I mean, like... Yeah, it's not, it's not the best, by any means, Damon. I agree. It's not the best topper that it could have been. But it's still a great card. Now, that being said, there's another card behind it. And the card behind it is legendary. I never said it was a legendary creature, although, you know, it's hard to have things that are legendary that are not creatures. But, you are correct. It's a Traxa. Not bad. Not bad. Traxa's pretty good. It's a Traxa alt art is pretty good. Yeah, Atraxa alt art is pretty good, and it's a mythic. So, I mean, like, pff, okay. Best commander in recent history. Yeah, or recent memory, yeah. Like, I mean, I would I would totally agree with you, Epic Dude. Like, I would, I have an Atraxa deck that I just, it's actually just the, it's the pre-made Atraxa deck, and I got it from one of the anthologies, because I think it was in one of the anthologies. And I just, like, I just put it together, like, I just sleeved it up, and I play it all the time. It's great. It's great. I have to say, uh, Matt, I think you did pretty well here. I think you did pretty well here. Let's get some perfect fits. I think it was, I think you did pretty well. And yeah, I'm putting this meddling mage in a perfect fit because I want to. Okay? If you are like, that doesn't deserve to be in there, I don't care. You're not the one sleeving them. How about that? How about that, everybody? What do you think, what do you think of that? One of the best boxes I've seen so far, not gonna lie. Sweet. Then I'm glad that I was able to open this box for Matt and give him these cards. Because Matt afforded me the opportunity to buy this box. So I'm happy that he got a good box. And he left the bad one for me, which is totally fine with me. Because the bad one is probably going to end up in my Masterpiece or my Masterful Monday series. Um, and so no one will know how bad of a box it is until the end of the series when we go... What did we actually get out of this box? Hey, we got a bunch of garbage. What a surprise. <laughs> Operation Fill the Wallet is a success. That's right. I'm putting all your mythics into perfect fits. I'm not going to put any of the other cards into perfect fits. Does anyone think any of the rares should be in perfect fits? I don't think any of the rares are like over like a huge amount of dollars. Are they? Noble Hierarch is only like 12 bucks now. Yeah, I put all the foil rares into per per perfect fits as well. Um, I haven't been back to check the mail yet, Ghost Unit. I haven't mailed out the grab bags yet. I was hoping to do that this weekend. Mainly because work has been just absolutely absurd and insane, and I haven't had a chance to, like, fill... Like, I, have, I haven't I have even 
labeled or done any of the stuff for the envelopes yet for the grab bags. So I apologize to all my patrons. Your stuff is a little bit delayed getting out there. Um, so exploration is pretty good. Did the Thoughtseize, uh, did Thoughtseize go down? I think Thoughtseize is still around like 20 bucks, right? But I don't, I don't know if it's like, I mean, like I, it's pricey enough to warrant a, a perfect fit, I guess. I don't know. I try not to put things into perfect fits that aren't over $25 or, uh, or like, you know, double masters and double the kittens or what? <laughs> Pretty much. Noble Hierarch is only 10 bucks. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like 10 bucks, something like that. Uh... Well, yeah, but, like, so I'll sleeve some of these cards in regular sleeves, like this, like penny sleeves, right? I don't, I don't perfect fit anything over five, because, because it doesn't need a perfect fit, it only needs a regular sleeve. That's my opinion. That's just my opinion. And, and the reason that is, is because sleeves are expensive, right? And, and sleeves are expensive. I don't want to just, like, sleeve everything. Why? How did this... How? How did you not end up in a sleeve? What? What? Excuse me. Hold on a second here. How did you... How did you not end up... I don't know. I don't know how that... Whatever. What? <laughs> whatever, I say. Yeah, I get, I get it, John, for sure. Right, I understand, right? She used a demon to mind trick you? Probably. That sounds right. Did I get the Reliquary Tower promo? Yes. I got a couple of them. Uh, Mo gave me a bunch. And so did uh, Untouchables in Milton. Okay. So that's all of this stuff. Here's all your foils. I gotta try and fit all of this into an envelope for Matt. See, this is the thing. Is, and I gotta try and figure out how to, I can ship it to him without the cards getting damaged and such. You know? You know? So I'm just putting them into baggies now just to keep them together so that I know that these are all mats. You see what I'm saying? That's basically all this is at the moment. Okay, this all goes into here like this. And there's your tokens. I assume you don't care about the box, right, Matt? Like, you don't need the box shipped to you. You only want the contents of said box, right? Um, Wrath of God and Court of Calling? No? So, um, I bought these from my LGS here, and their Wrath of God promos uh, haven't come in yet. They didn't get them. They got delayed for whatever reason. Or at least that's what he told me. Um, and he said he owes them to me, and that he'll get them to me as soon as he gets them. Uh, which is fine. Um, but there's a Court of Calling promo as well. Because he only told me about the Wrath of God promo. And I was like, I didn't even know there were promos for these boxes. Same thing in Montreal? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's happening all over the place. Um, a lot of people are getting shorted on stuff and things like that. Um, boop, boop, doop. Um, I do have another box of Double Masters, but I don't plan on opening it. Um, because I plan on opening it with the Masterful Monday series. For those of you who know about my Monday series, I generally try to, like, open up a bunch of packs of, like, you know, different sets and stuff each Monday. Um, for a series and we do kind of like a you vote each week and you you know, have a chance to win some stuff um, last time we did Mediocre Monday where we opened a bunch of like some of the most mediocre sets of Magic's history um, we did giveaways every week um, I already have all of the boxes for another series of uh, Masterful Monday but I was hoping to hold off until doing it until next year and the reason being is because I just 
didn't want to do it so close to having just done the last Masterful Monday, which was Series 2, which was just at the beginning of this year. Um, it was like, what, Jan January-ish that we did it? Or we just wrapped it up around January? Something like that? Keep it sealed and sell it when the singles... Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's one way of looking at it. Yeah. Listen, Jan, or listen, Jan, I'm not complaining by any means. I'm not complaining that they didn't get their car. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that happens, right? Especially when Wizards is trying to, like, push out all this product. You guys got absolutely hosed in Europe for Jumpstart. Like, just hosed, right? Like, jeez. Somerset Saturday would be pretty cool. Somerset Saturday. Are you saying, like, to open up, uh... Some summer edition cards is like you're talking about specifically the the was it uh, revised and or fourth edition was it fourth edition that had the summer set or was it revised I can't remember but you're talking about specifically the summer set I don't know how I would get my hands on specifically summer uh, like sealed product you know what I mean like I think it was revised yeah I don't know how I would get my hands on sealed summer uh, sets. Because I would imagine that if it's sealed, it's probably extremely expensive. It's ironic that they had to, they needed to jumpstart this, the launch of Jumpstart. Yeah, that is pretty ironic. I agree. And yes, the uh, uh, the the Jace Mind Sculptor playmat was picked specifically because I knew Jace was in this set. Didn't know that we would get a Jace out of the box, but I figured it was fitting. And it's hilarious that we got him in the last pack. Um, Along with a foil Stoneforge Mystic, because that's also ridiculous. But here we are. Yeah, yeah. Summer Magic, very, very expensive. I agree. Like, if you guys wanted to donate to me to get, you know, summer uh, sets, you know, like, to, to then do for, like, that series, by all means, that's fine. But, like, <laughs> or you're talking, like, the summer sets, like, Battle Bond, Take the Crown, uh, sets that came out in the summer. That's not a bad idea. Damon, I like that idea. That's that's a pretty cool idea. I might have to look that up and see if I can figure out what sets came out around the summer that were like one-offs, right? Because like you said, like Battle Bond, Take the Crown, that kind of stuff would be pretty cool. That'd be interesting. Both Stoneforge and, and Jace got banned in the same standard rotation, didn't they? Um... Sorry, wait, both Stoneforge and Have got banned? You, I'm assuming you're talking about Jace. And uh, yes, I believe so. Your friend opened a Japanese VIP Master and he got alternate art for well. Sweet. Yeah, they definitely did. They definitely got banned in the same rotation. Because uh, they were both from the, uh, the Zendikar block, right? Stoneforge Mystic was originally printed in Zendikar. Right, the original Zendikar. And then Jace was printed in World Lake. So yes, they both got banned while in standard. <laughs> and then both have since been unbanned from their modern, right? Because they were they were banned in modern as well, right? Now they are no longer banned in modern. And I opened them in the same pack. Coincidence? I think not. Obviously, there's some sort of conspiracy here. All right, everybody. Speaking of jumpstart, should we just end on two jumpstart packs? Why not, right? Screw it. I've got them sitting here. Let's open them. What deck would we be making today? What deck would we be making today? Let's find out. Under the Sea Elves is what Mana Burn is saying. Or, that's what Eric is saying. Under the Sea Unicorns is what Mana Burn is saying. Goblin Goblin? That'd be pretty funny, wouldn't it? Come out of there, cards. Why? Okay. Okay. 
Spooky. Enchanted. Spooky Enchanted. Now, to find out which ones we got, right? Is there anything in Spooky that's worthwhile? Or is Spooky one of the worst ones? Spooky Enchantments. Okay, we got Black Market. That's a good card, right? I feel like Black Market is a very good card. Right? Because this is like, whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on it. But any of your pre-combat main phase, add X, add black mana for each counter. Seems good. Malefic Scythe. Bone Picker. Eternal Taskmaster. Gristle Grinner. My goodness, what a terrible name. Liliana's Devotee. Crypt Lurker. Caged Zombie. Dutiful Attendant. Finishing Blow, Plagued Rusulka, Sanitarium Skeleton, and then we got our lands. And there's our specific land, right? Like, that's our cool graveyard land for Spooky, right? I think Black Market's pretty good, though. That's a pretty good one to hit. All right, Enchanted. What do you got for me? Do we want to see the rare last? We want to go this way. That's our land. There's our sweet land. There's our thriving heath. Knight of the Tusk. Indomitable Will. Trusty Retriever. Forced Worship. Anointed Chorister. Dub. Um, I don't know what my favorite jumpstart land is. Um, the Elves one is pretty cool. The Goblins one is pretty cool. Um, the Healing one from White is pretty awesome. Uh, the Reading one from Islands is pretty cool. Like the books. That one looks pretty neat. How, how much would it cost to get all the semi-decks with all variants? It would cost a lot. Because, like, this one's enchanted, this one's spooky, and the spooky deck, I think, has, like, seven or eight variations, right? And I think that's the same with literally everyone. You like the one from the white equipment? The doggo one is pretty cute, too. Yeah, the doggo one is pretty cute, I agree. Stonehaven. That white fluffy boy, right? That white fluffy boy. Faith's Fetters. Face of Divinity. Blessed Spirits. And then this is our rare here. Ooh, Core Spirit Dancer. It's not really the best rare from the enchantment deck, but there it is. So there you go. Enchanted Spookiness. Spooky Enchantment. Oh, the one with the Phyrexian text is really cool, too. Yeah, the Swamp. Yeah, that one's pretty neat. I'll give you that one, Jan. I would I would definitely take that one, just because the Phyrexian text on it is pretty cool. Core Spirit Dancer is like, meh. Like, it's a really good card for enchantments, but it's it's been reprinted so many times that it's just kind of like, eh. Like, I would have rather had, like, the enchantment um, that, like, uh, gives you 2-2 two -two Unicorns when you play creatures or whatever, or the enchantment that, like, prevents non-combat damage. I think it's the same enchantment, right? So, Orzhov Midrange is our deck. I mean, it seems like it, but at the same time, like, the Black Market, I don't know if we're going to have anything that really to pay off with the Black Market. Like, the Sanitarium Skeleton is great, right? With with Black Market and, like, Plague Grusalka, great, right? Uh, dies, Return of the Earth. Yeah, that's fine. Cage Zombie... Liliana's Devotee is fine. Whenever a creature dies, it gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Taskmaster gets our stuff back. And Scythe is good. Yeah. But then, like, our white, like, just didn't have a lot of creatures, right? Like, one. Two. Three. Four. Five. 
It's rough. It's rough. We tron up one of our creatures and toss the weak ones to sack outlets? Yeah. It seems like it. It seems like it, Epic Dude. Also, with that land, we have all the Phyrexian alphabet. Nice. It went really well, Kairu Kairu. It went really well. Matt's box was absolutely bonkers. It had eight, it had seven mythics in it and a foil mythic. And it had three foil rares. The mythics were all pretty good. Um, we got Jace. We got Avenger of Zendikar. We got Kalia. We got Brea. We got Blightsteel. We got Skithrix. What was the other mythic? I don't remember what the other mythic was. Shit. Shit. Atraxa. Atra well, that was the box topper. Thoughtseize, Kalia, Brea, Blightsteel, Avenger of Zendikar, Skithrix, Lantax, Jace, Foil Stoneforge Mystic, Foil Sunforger, so Foil Beer Mirror Battlesphere, Foil Sneak Attack, Meddling Mage, and Atraxa as box toppers. Pretty good. Pretty good. And then the rest of the box was pretty good as well. Lots of the commons and uncommons worth a few bucks each. Um, and then the rares, we hit some pretty good rares too. We hit four of the five filter lands. Um, we hit a Noble High Arc. We hit an Explorer. Uh, what else did we hit? Um, there was a bunch of stuff. I don't know. And it was a really good box. It was a really good box. Anyway, and then we, I just opened up some Jumpstart just to end the stream because it's been an hour and a half and it's time for me to get back to cats probably and help Sharla not worry about cats so much. Ba basically a solid commander player box. Exactly. And that's what Matt said. <laughs> that's exactly what Matt said. When we finished opening the box, he was like, as a commander player, this box has made me very happy. And I was like, sweet. That's awesome. Yeah, so I mean, like, we definitely got there. Have I named them yet? Yes, the cats. Uh, the gray cat is named Nova. Like a supernova. Because Charla wanted a cat named after something kind of like space. Um, and the calico's name is pepperoni. Like pizza. Like pizza pepperonis. Because I got to name the calico. And so pepperoni is the name I chose because she's my she's my little salty girl. I wanted to name the cat after something for pizza, but Charlotte didn't want the cat's name to be pizza, so I was like, all right, pepperoni, and she said, that's fine, because I can call her Pepper for short, and I said, okay, sounds good. So we basically just call her Pepper, um, just because it's a shorter name than Pepperoni, um, but Pepperoni is her full name. Also, food. I like to make my cats have food names. Imagine yelling out the door, pizza, pizza. Somebody wants to buy some expensive cards. What did they say they wanted? They said they wanted the... The tutor and the library, I think. Is that what they said? Tutor and library. And they wanted pictures of the backs. So I gotta get pictures of the backs as well. Which is totally fine. I get it. When you're spending that kind of money on cards, definitely, uh, definitely get the pictures you want. You know what I'm saying? I guess we just, I'm just gonna put these like this. Because I want to keep them together so that I can play these decks. Because I'm planning to keep all of my jumpstart packs, like, essentially sealed. And then I'm gonna put them into, like, sleeves and then i'm gonna put them in those like cardamanji things to make like essentially a box of like decks and you just randomly pick two and slam them together and play that's my plan oh we're wrapping up here anyway kairu kairu so thanks for stopping by 
And, uh... What set is the Damnation from? It's from Modern Masters. This is foil, by the way. You can see the back there. It's completely un unmarred, which is nice. I don't know how I'm going to get this guy pictures of the backs of these things without pictures of the fronts of them. You know what I mean? Like, how do I prove that these are actually the cards? What a weird thing to have to worry about. Right? I gotta, like, try to get, like, an angle on these two that, like, doesn't have, like, reflections of stuff. And so I could do that, right? I could just be like, hey, if you go to the tail end of this, yeah, use a mirror, I know, but, like, it's just so weird. All right, well, good luck with your VIP, Bruce, right? I hope it goes well for you. That sounds great. You have to take them out of the perfect... Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I don't want to, but I'm going to. You're correct, Maholnik. So if I do like this, right? Now there should be no reflection, right? Yeah. No, those aren't. That better? Okay, that's better. Ah, whatever. I'll just send him all of these four photos. It's fine. Uh, because he might be buying them. Yeah, he want the person who's buying them wants to make sure he's not getting fakes or getting like cards that are damaged because I'm selling them as near mint, right? Which they are. They came they're pack fresh. I opened both of them myself, right? So um, you know, it's totally fine that he wants pictures, right? Does he know who he's dealing with? I mean, I can do that too, Maholnik. That's fine. Just so that he knows, right? That these are, in fact, here with me, right? I can just get, like, a piece of paper here and just say... Right? Like that. So that he knows, right? Right? There. Perfect. Then I go here like this, and I go... <clears throat> there. I just I just messaged him back on Twitter and I said this. So that way now he knows.
Okay, send him this. 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 There, bombard you with photos. Once a guy from Spain tried to sell you a counterfeit Chalice of the Void. At the time, they cost $70. Yeah. They sleeved it four times trying to hide it. Jeez. Ridiculous. All right. Well, there you go, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Big thank you to Matt for essentially affording me the opportunity to open a box of Double Masters for the channel. I really appreciate it because I probably wasn't going to open up much Double Masters for the channel if it wasn't for him. So thank you very much, Matt. I really appreciate it. Um, if any of you out there want to purchase product through me to allow me to open it for the channel, just reach out. You know where to find me. I'm on Discord. Uh, you can ping me on Patreon. Hell, you could leave me a comment on YouTube. You know, we can work it out. Or, I mean, there's even Twitter, right? My DMs are open. Uh, everything works, you know? What are these? Where did all these... What did these lands come from? Are these the lands from the Enchanted deck? It looks like this Enchanted pile is very low. Yeah, this is, these are the lands from here. Good. <laughs> Well, seeing as I used all my luck for you, Matt, I mean, it makes sense. What did you miss? Nothing. I was just taking photos of the expensive cards that I'm trying to sell on Twitter. Speaking of which, if anyone is interested, I am still selling all of these. These are all foil, by the way. We got an Ulamog. We got a Jinja Taxis. Damnation. Uh, we got Gravecrawler promo. We got Shieldred promo. Bitter Blossom. Gamble. Subterranean Tremors. Blood Moon. Uh, Colonian Hydra, Birds of Paradise promo, uh, Panharmonicon, Spell Queller, Prosh Foil, Chalice of the Void, Bloodstained Mire, Wasteland, Phyrexian Tower, Force of Will, Wooded Foothills, Misty Rainforest. All the prices are in USD. Prices are all in USD. How much is the birds? Uh, I had the price for the birds. Let me pull it up. Uh, birds. Because the birds is like a weird one because it's the promo. This one. I have a whole crap ton of these birds, by the way. Yeah, the Force of Will is, is foil. As well. Uh, the birds is currently right now. And let's just see here. Um... I try to, like, make sure that the price I'm listing it at is, like, lower than what TCG has it for. But also, like, I want to make sure it's reasonable. Um, and the interesting thing about this is that, okay, so so let's put it in perspective, okay? The, the market price on TCG for this card is $38.71, okay? That's the market price. But everything that's available on TCG right now is moderately played, damaged, or lightly played, okay, or another language. And the lowest one in there, which is moderately played, is 5219, okay? So how they're saying that the market price for this card is only $38.71 is absurd. Um, now, I get it. The market price generally gets uh, populated based on how many have sold recently for certain prices and all that kind of stuff. But when... Nobody has it at that price on here. I, it's, far, it's hard for me to believe that they can still have that as the market price. Like, what is what is the essentially? When was the last sale of Birds of Paradise to make the market price thirty eight dollars and seventy one cents? It doesn't tell you that, right? It doesn't tell you that, right? 
Um, so I don't like using the market price of TCG because it's obviously not accurate. So when I look at it on uh, Goldfish, they generally list all of the sales across any site that has it available currently. Right now, the only place that has it available, according to Goldfish, is uh, TCG. And the mid price is fifty eight eighty nine. So my my plan is to basically take the price of whatever's got stuff listed, right? So like if anyone has a near mint one listed, I take that price and I take a percentage off, and that's what I list it as, right? Or if it's cheaper at like you know Card Kingdom or something like that than what TCG has it as, then I take that. I take what essentially whatever the lowest price is that's on a site where you could person you could actually buy the card right now for that price. I take that price and I cut it by a bit. But like I can't use the market price. Like when people are like, "Oh, the market price is thirty eight dollars," I'm like, "Yeah, but I can't like I can't actually sell. I can't actually sell it right for that price, right?" because nobody has it at that price anywhere at all right and the best part is, is like people come at me with the buy the buy list prices from tcg all the time like for instance right now the buy the buy list price for that birds of paradise is 20 dollars, right and that means that that's somebody's out there actively being like hey i want to buy this card but i'm willing i'm only willing to pay 20 bucks for it right and it's like yeah but the card's not worth 20 dollars. it's worth more more than that by quite a bit right so the buy list price is not something that you can use to calculate price either. Listed median is the closest thing you're going to get to actually getting an accurate sell price on TCG because that's essentially taking all of the ones that are listed and giving you the median price, right? The problem with that is it also doesn't take into effect the <laughs> the quality of the card. It doesn't take into effect the, you know, is it moderately played, is it damaged, is it lightly played, blah, blah, blah. So, that being said, I'm looking for $50 American for the bird. That's what I'm looking for, personally. Now that can obviously be negotiated, right? All of my prices are negotiable, right? But I'm trying to like make it something fair that's not crazy and that like is a reasonable price. Do you see what I'm saying? For for what's available and where the card is and and what it's, you know, cuz like right now Goldfish has it as 58.89. So I think $50 is a decent price. That's almost, you know, what? That's like more than 10% off at that point, basically, right? Because 10% would be five, like eight, you know, five dollars and eighty cents. Well, I'm giving you eight eighty off, right? So that's all. That's like 15% off of the price that's listed on Goldfish. Now, Goldfish's price is not necessarily correct either, but you know what I'm saying, right? Um, yeah. So face to face is great if you're trying to do only Canadian, right? But I do find that face to face overprices their cards quite a bit as well. Um, so, you know, you have to take that with a grain of salt. A lot of the, like, major, uh, gaming, uh, companies will always overprice their cards. Um, and, like, it happens a lot in the aspect of, like, it's a Therese Nielsen art, too. Yeah, so it is. I'm surprised it has a price tag of that high, too. Then to be honest, Herbert, I'm surprised it's not lower, right? Like I don't think does face to face even have this birds on their site. I feel like they probably don't, because it's a promo. Pseudo reserve list, yeah. I mean that's true. Do they even have this card on their website? My God, there's so many. Uh, Blurg. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. There it is. Birds of Paradise. Yeah, so, okay, like, so for instance here. Birds of Paradise uh, foil promo on Face to Face's site is currently $0.00. Because they don't have any in stock. So it's marked as zero dollars. The problem with the companies marking things like that as zero dollars is that even though it's not in stock, that is now their price that they have listed. So when they go to a bot when you go to a buy list, like if I was to go to face to face's buy list and say, Hey, I have this Birds of Paradise promo, 
that I could sell to you. They go, oh, well, it's only worth zero bucks on our site, so we'll give you, you know, 50 cents. And I'm like, that's not how, that's not how that works. And they're like, well, it's only, it's not valued at anything because we don't have any of them. And it's like, yeah, but that's not the point, right? Like, uh, companies will generally drop the price of cards that they don't have in stock specifically so that they can drop their buy list price for them. It's very shitty business, um, but it happens. Uh, and it sucks. That's why I don't sell my cards to stores. Their new site UI is is faster, Damon. It's faster. Their old site UI was horribly slow. Um, but I agree with you. It doesn't look very nice. It looks... It just looks too, like, sterile. The Japanese one is 20 bucks on eBay. There you go. Right? But is that a buy it now price? Or is that... Or is that the actual... Uh, let's see. So that is... Yeah, okay. So again, right? If you look at it, right? What are they selling it as? Card is in slightly played condition. Right? So it's not lightly... So I, is SP considered LP? Is that how they do it? Right? So again, it's still not near mint. And they're selling it for eighteen ninety nine US. Right? So that's US dollars as well. Right? And the thing is, is like... <laughs> the interesting thing about this, right, is... They have more than 10 of these available, and they've sold 14 already. Where the heck, where the heck do they get all these copies of these promos, these, these, uh, those promos from? I see the Japanese one here, if that's the one you're talking about. I assume that's the one you're talking about. 24 bucks for the, for that one, right? Like, lightly played English is $43 on eBay, right? Uh, Japanese promo... Thirty nine ninety nine, right? Like, this is the thing, and the, and the problem with eBay too, right? Is that it's not always the best. It's not always the best, right? So let's see here. No, I'm boop a doop a doop. No, not that. I want this. I should fill a container with cards and ship it to U.S. Can to sell. Like, so, Maholnik, this is, like, um, if any of you follow, like, any of the MTG community on Twitter and stuff, um, there's, uh, Jeremy from Missouri MTG. It's actually how he makes a lot of his business is by traveling outside of North America to essentially sell the cards that are a higher value outside of America, outside of America, and then buy all the cards that are cheaper there, bring them back to America, and sell them for a higher price. That's basically like how he churns product, which is a really smart business model, right, when you think about it. Because if you can afford to travel to these countries to then buy these cards, to then bring them back and sell them for a higher profit, why wouldn't you, right? Doesn't make sense not to, right? Uh, cause what is it? 70, 72.99 divided by four. So that's 18. So like they're selling a four pack of slightly played for basically about 18 bucks as well. Right? Yeah. Dream come true. Exactly. Anyway, that's going to be it for me for tonight. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in. I hope you all had a good night. Thank you, Matt, for letting me open up this box for you. I really appreciate it. I hope you all enjoyed Double Masters. Um, this stream has been going on a little bit longer than it should have, but here we are. You have to be buying a lot of stuff to cover the travel costs. Yeah, and, and that, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, you got to remember, like, he's buying stuff that's not necessarily cheap to begin with, right? Like, he's buying Power 9 and things like that. So, like, he's buying things that the return on investment is, like, quite a bit higher, right? Yes. For all of, the, all of you that are going to be going out this weekend to draft some Double Masters, good luck, have fun, stay safe. Right? 
<laughs> May your pulls double be better. Yes, exactly. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And we'll see you all uh, on Monday, hopefully. I should be hopefully doing some filming this weekend to get videos up and ready. I actually filmed the newest episode of Kraken for a Cause. I had Pixie Kitten from Pixie Kitten Plays on. So stay tuned for that. It should be up next Sunday. It won't be up this weekend. It'll be up next weekend just because I haven't had a chance to edit it yet. And I normally take a day or two to edit that. Um, the conclusion of uh, Mediocre Monday should be on Monday, yes. That's what my plan is. But again... I hope to get there. I don't know if I'm going to get there because I still have to do all of the condensing of all the spreadsheets and stuff and all that kind of stuff. So you might just get another kitten update video on Monday and then followed by regular cracking packs videos um, until the following Monday when I can finally get it all compiled. Um, we'll have to see how it goes. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful night and we'll talk to you all later. Oh, and as always, may your pulls ever be better. Thanks for watching.